Hey everybody, Melon here. Welcome back to another Teardown video. Today we are going to be doing the Razer Death Adder V3 Wired Edition. Now, this is one of my favorite mics that released in 2023. This mouse had insanely good performance and the build quality has been superb so far. So I wanted to do a brief Teardown video to show you guys how to disassemble this unit and how to do minor repairs on it, swap the bases, swap the side buttons, that kind of stuff. Now for this Teardown, this is going to be a lot simpler than a lot of the other Teardowns we've done just because this is a wired mouse. This is going to be a very easy to service unit, which is really nice to see from Razer. But this thing does have some interesting surprises on the inside. Now, just before we get started, as always, opening this unit within the two-year manufacturer warranty will void your warranty. So do not open this unit unless you are not covered by the Razer warranty and you have to replace the parts yourself. Don't open this for fun because again, you will void your warranty. And while this unit is a fairly easy disassembly process, just be, use an abundance of caution so you don't break anything accidentally. But let's go ahead and get right into it. Now, in terms of disassembly, this unit is pretty straightforward. You only need two bits to take this apart. You just need a hex bit and a very, very tiny star bit. So very easy to take apart there. As always, I recommend you have somebody to keep track of the screws. While there aren't too many, just make sure you keep track of what comes from where. So to start off, we're gonna go ahead and we're going to grab our little hex bit at the bottom here. We're gonna go ahead and take that. And what you're going to do is you're going to flip your Death Adder V3 over. Now, I've already removed my stock skates, uh, as I had previous ones on here already, but you will have to remove the bottom ring here. You can remove the top ones if you want. Just make sure you have an extra set available of whatever you want, just so you can put them back on when you're done the repair. Now, first off, what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and remove these three screws here. Now, the easiest way to get the base of the Death Out of V3 open is to take your fingers and put a little pressure right here and right here. So you're just going to go ahead and do that and the bottom will crack open. And once it's open, you can get your fingernail in there. Now, what you're going to do is take your fingernail and run it along the side of the mouse here to remove the clips and the exact same process on the other side. Just like that. Now, once it's open to this part here, the base of the mouse is hooked into the front by a clip here, clip here, very similar to what we saw with the MP1 OS. So what you wanna do is you wanna take the mouse and just gently lift from the bottom and just kind of shimmy off from the bottom and you should feel it come right off nice and easy. Now that that's done, you can pull the top of the Death Adder V3 shell right off. Now, one really cool thing I wanted to highlight about the Death Adder V3 that I found out in preparation for this video, the main clicks on the Death Adder V3 are actually pre-lubed from the factory, which I didn't know about. This is the only mouse I've seen this year that actually has pre-lubed switches, which is I thought was kind of cool, which probably explains why the Death Adder V3 switches have felt so consistent and so good over this year. Oh, and by the way, if you're wondering, these grips are the Soul Spacer grips. I covered these in a review earlier in the year, but these are like one of my favorite grips that have released this year. If you want to check that out, you can go ahead and look at my review for those ones but they're really handy little like mouse anchor grips um just wanted to let you know just because they're a little unique hey everybody future melon here i just want to make a quick note about the hair down here so the reason why i didn't remove the main clicks on the death out of v3 is that the main clicks are indented into the shell not with a screw but with two plastic hook clips they're just kind of anchored into the shell that way now there's nothing wrong with this the only problem is, is that just i don't really trust myself removing the plastic clips unless the clicks already broken because i do not want to have a repeat of what happened with the mp1 os where I removed the clips and for whatever reason, the clicks just refused to work. So that's why I didn't remove them here. They are removable. I just didn't want to risk breaking my mouse just due to the plastic clips. You can take them off. I wouldn't recommend doing it unless you absolutely have to, but I just wanted to clarify that before we continue with the teardown. So now we have the main board for the Death Adder V3 wired. Now, the first thing you're probably gonna see is that this thing is really tiny, and this is probably the smallest main board you're going to see on a mouse this year. So first off, what we're gonna do here is we have this little daughter board here for the side buttons so we're going to go ahead and remove that now one thing i wanted to note you can probably see on the bottom there the wires on here are just very loosely soldered into this board so be really 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 careful when taking this off so what you're going to want to do is just get your fingernail and you're going to want to just pry off this little connector at the base here so i'm going to go ahead and do that sorry if my camera covers it i'll try and show you guys how to do it once you get that disconnected, you can take this sideboard and just with a little bit of pressure, you can just wiggle it out of place. You will probably hear a click when it comes off because there's a little bit of an anchoring mechanism right there, but that's okay. And then you have the daughter board here for the side clicks. So again, just be really careful because these are just very, very loosely soldered in there. So just make sure when you're taking it in and out, don't put too much pressure on this part so you don't damage the sideboard. So now we're left with the PCB here. So you can see the 3395 sensor or the Focus Pro 30K sensor, which is just a 3395. We have the MCU, the main switches, the scroll wheel encoder, and the scroll wheel click itself. Now this connector here is for the wired connection. Now due to this connector just being a little bit of a 
a thicker connector, these ones tend to be a lot harder to take off. I would highly, highly, highly recommend not taking this off unless you absolutely have to. Leave it intact unless you're going to be cable modding this unit for whatever reason, but just leave it intact. Don't try and take it off. The sideboard is significantly easier to take off than this is, so don't take this off unless you absolutely have to. Now, in terms of removing the main board, it is really easy. All we have to do is remove a uh, screw here, a screw up here, and a screw here, so I'll go ahead and do that. All right, now to take off the main board, you'll see this very tiny little clip right here. So what you're gonna to wanna to do is you're gonna to wanna to take your fingernail, just gently pull that back, and with your other finger, just put a little bit of pressure towards the bottom, and it will flick right off. Now, this is a very strong connector, so just be very careful when you do this. Don't snap this connector, because that will ruin a couple things. Now, in order to take the PCB out, all you do is just lift the PCB pretty much straight off once it's been disconnected. Be very careful with the scroll wheel, because there are standoffs for the scroll wheel here and here, so don't pull this PCB this way or this way. You just wanna pull it straight up. So you're going to go ahead and pull it straight up. Now, once you reach a certain point, you're going to notice some resistance and the resistance is going to be coming from this cable here. So what I do is this point is once the scroll wheels out of its holders, I flip the board over and then you can see at the bottom how there are these wired connections for the, I mean, the switch here. So what you're going to want to do is just go ahead and pull these out pull this out and then the front of the board is on this kind of unique little connector here. Just kind of shimmy this up and it should pop off like that. Now, one really cool thing you can do with the Death Adder V3 is you can actually swap the scroll wheel very easily because it's not a traditional set for a scroll wheel because the scroll wheel click is actually this kind of pillar click here. I actually don't know what this is. I haven't seen one like this before, so I have to do a little digging into what this is. But the scroll wheel itself, you can actually just slide out of the encoder with a little bit of pressure and it just pops right out. So if you want to replace the scroll wheel in the Death Adder V3, you can. I wouldn't really recommend it. I think it's completely fine, but if you really wanted to, you can do so. So that's pretty much it for like the disassembly process. Again, there's really not a lot to take out here. It is again, very, very impressive how much tech is packed into such a small PCB here and how good the performance is. But well, that's kind of cool to see. And again, as I mentioned before, don't take this off unless you absolutely have to just because this connector is very, very difficult to get off. So let's all for the disassembly process. Let's go ahead and do the reassembly process. All right, so for the reassembly process, the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna put the scroll wheel back into the unit. So what you're gonna do is you're gonna to wanna to take the thinner side of the scroll wheel and put this into the hole in the encoder here. Again, pretty straightforward. It just kind of naturally fits in, just kind of like that. There you go, like that. Now make sure the scroll wheel still turns and clicks before you put the unit back together. The scroll wheel is very, very, very loose. So just be very careful with it before you reassemble the unit. Now, next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna go ahead and put the PCB back into the base. Now, the tricky part about this is, is we have to deal with this cable. So to start off, the front of this cable goes into the unit kind of it sits into this little thing in the front here so you want to put it into this little holder just like that and then press it down now this is almost certainly going to come loose when you're trying to reassemble it so just trying to put your thumb here just to kind of hold it together all right now next up what you want to do is there's a little bit of a channel in the middle here you want to make sure this cable goes into there so go ahead and do that and then next up, you wanna make sure the same part goes into this other secondary channel here. Now, I would make sure to give this a little bit of slack because the more slack you give it, the less chance it's going to come off during your reassembly process. Now, next up, what you wanna do is you wanna fold this over and put this over these little standoffs for the scroll wheel. Again, this can be a little tricky because these cable, this cable here likes to come off all the time. So just be very careful when you do this. All right, so now that that's over and the scroll wheel is kind of sitting in its holder, albeit a little loose, the next thing you wanna do is try to line up all these little screws here. So the best thing I found to do this is just kind of put a little bit of pressure on the sides of the main clicks and hold that down and then run your thumb down here. And remember this clip from earlier, we wanna clip this in, just try and make sure that this screw hole is lined up with this bottom one here. And with a little bit of pressure, it should snap into place. Now the board will probably shift a little bit. That's normal, don't worry about that. If the board doesn't naturally go down, don't force it. It's probably this cable became came loose underneath or there's whatever reason. You don't have to worry too much about this bottom button because again, it's just a standard button. It's not a rocker. So it will clip in no problem. The biggest problem you're gonna have is here and the scroll wheel. So just make sure everything's lined up before you put it together. But if everything's lined up, no problem. It should just clip back into place. All right. So now that that's in, what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and put back in the screws we took out from here, over there, and here. We'll go ahead and do that now. 
All right, so now that the screws are in, you go ahead and check just to make sure everything looks lined up and everything looks good. So we shouldn't have any problem putting this back together. Now for this cable, I'd recommend just slightly tilting it this way, just so it doesn't get in the way of your reassembly process here, but it shouldn't do have, it shouldn't affect anything. It will just naturally curve over when we put the top shell back on, but just try and nudge it this way a little bit. Now, next up, what we're gonna do is we're gonna go ahead and put in the side button PCB here. So again, this is very straightforward. What you're gonna wanna do is you're gonna wanna put this into this little holder wire down so it's going to slide into this little rocker just like this now you will hear a click when this goes in that's completely normal if it doesn't go in normally just try and reseed it you could be forcing a wire into a place where it doesn't go properly you should just hear a natural click you should not have to force this into the side of the shell now once that's done go ahead and take this little ribbon connector and just pop it back into its holder there just use your fingernails just to make sure it actually goes in properly like that and just make sure it's seated properly. Now, one other thing you can check as well is just triple check to make sure nothing else came loose from here. Again, very rare, it's going to happen, but just be extremely careful with that as well. Now, before we seal the death out of E3 back up, I would plug this into your computer, turn it on and make sure the sensor still works properly. Make sure that your side buttons, your main clicks, your scroll wheel, just make sure everything works before you put the top shell back on. All right, now for the top shell reassembly, since the top shell is all its own piece, it's pretty straightforward here. The only thing you really have to worry about is up at the top, there are these two hooks here those latch in to the top of the shell here and here so again very similar to what we saw with the mp1 os so what you want to do is you want to take the top of the shell and you want to kind of put everything in just very loosely so you want to kind of roughly line it up and then what you want to do is you want to push in from the top and you want to try and push in these two contact points here now this is pretty finicky to be completely honest with y'all it took me a little while to figure out how to do this properly it's just a little weird because you have to put downward pressure, but you also have to put it into the top here. So you will probably have to take this apart and then put it back in a couple times. It took me a couple tries to get this back in properly. It just, it's a little awkward, but once you get it in, there we go. Once you get it in properly, it should clip in. Now, again, just be very careful not to force it. It should just naturally slide into place with a little bit of forward pressure. So just be very careful with that. Again, it's a little awkward just because these top clips. So just play around with it. It should just naturally seed itself back in. Now, what you want to do is go ahead and press on the base and clip in all the clips on the side of the mouse. There's a clip uh, here, here, and I believe there's one back here. And that's pretty much everything. Now, before we reassemble the unit, again, just take a check just to make sure all of your buttons are working. Make sure that nothing is in misaligned. Everything should work properly, but just triple check everything before we put it together. Then lastly, what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and put in those three screws we took out with the base at the beginning. Make sure that everything's connected, of course, first. Make sure there's no gaps in the top and bottom shell connection, but it should just be one for one. Alrighty, and that is pretty much it. So again, once those are in, you should have a seamless connection across the entire unit. Triple check all your buttons to make sure they work, and that is everything. And then at this point, you can go ahead and put back on a set of skates. You can either use stock skates or you can use dot skates or whatever your preferred aftermarket skates are, but that is all you have to do for the Death Out of E3. So again, a very interesting unit with some interesting design decisions on the inside. Again, I'm shocked at how small the PCB is for this mouse, because like the PCB is this big, but the rest of the mouse is this big. I'm shocked Razer has made a mini of this yet because it feels like they should but that is everything for disassembling the death out of v3 i hope you guys enjoyed the video if you guys do want to check out these little grips i mentioned earlier these are the soul spacers i do have a review of those so go check those out and if you do want to see my full review of the death out of v3 of course i do have that over on the channel as well but anyways thank you very much for checking out another teardown video i greatly appreciate it and i will catch you guys in the next video peace